Greetings ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this daily science fiction extravaganza commonly known as Tales, Tales from Out from Space. Out. Space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And, as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider supporting the channel. On to the science fiction. Story number one, D&D, yet more proof that humans can weaponize anything. Written by a kinetic nerd. So me and some old friends have decided to give Dungeons and Dragons a shot. Get another feather in our collective nerd cap. One of us was playing a wizard. Now for the uninitiated, spells in D&D tend to fall squarely into utility and combat types. If the wording is anything to go by, the writers of the rulebook went to quite some lengths to ensure this. Prestigitation is about this prime example of a utility spell. You can clean stuff, make brief harmless sensory effects, flavor your food, mark stuff, make temporary non-magical trinkets, and, in general, do whatever you want with it outside of combat. But this cheeky motherfucker decided to take this painstakingly worded spell description as an insult and a challenge. So, what's he do? He finds a way to kipple upwards of a dozen bandits with freaking prestidigation. How? You may ask. Why, by flavoring the fastest acting poison he could get his hands on, so it made the medieval age schlop the bandit's mess hall taste like a goddamn ambrosia, and passing it off as an exotic spice to the chefs in charge. This was his second session. Well, he has not managed to beat that kill count with a single spell, yet. The game master has started keeping a close eye on him whenever he opens his damn mouth. And... Of story. Story number two. Praise the Emperor, written by Cal Wallace. Is done what? She tapped into the energy generator, Captain. Why? What in the Emperor's name is it doing now? I think mean, perhaps you should ask it yourself. I wasn't quite sure. Captain Crescia shot a first mate a look and raised her dorsal spikes in irritation, pushing past him and stalking through the corridors of her ship. The human, currently living below engineering in what, for some reason, it insisted on calling the poop deck, was constantly doing uh, things. It vexed Crasher that the mammal laughed every time she said poop deck. Too disrespectful. First mate Arth swiped her claw over the door control and allowed the captain to enter first. She was ready to deliver stern admonishment when they both paused, nostrils fled. Earth, what's that smell? Her first mate's tongue flickered, tasting the air. It smells like fresh, blackened. I smell charcoal, hot metal. Agreed. A fire? He shook his feathered head, light gleaming iridescently from his scales. If it is, it's small and controlled. Crescia rubbed the shallow chin and the slender claw. Be ready to douse the area if we find an uncontrollable conflagration. Earth blinked in acknowledgement, and they moved forward. The human soon came into sight, squatting on its oddly hinged knees, poking at a small brazier, apparently fashioned from discarded parts from the engineering deck above them. She looked up from the cooking device and waved the spatula at the friendly greeting. Watcher, Captain, how is it going? Two Lassitanes glanced at each other, and the kosher flicked her tongue out wildly. What are you doing, hairless mammal? The human made an odd expression, and the eyes rolled backwards at its skull. I told you, it's Sam. She stood, springing legs, then jolted her up suddenly. It still made Crescia queasy, watching how those tiny backward limbs propelled her gracelessly around. The captain asked you what you were doing, human. Sam looked at Earth, clear at her sardonic grin on her face. Why, I'm having a little cook-up. I'd rather be under the stars, but, you know... She puffed up her cheeks out, clutched the meaty digits around the fleshy neck, and made noises miming asphyxiation. Crescia's tongue shot out like a mocking chuckle. This food module not to your liking. I did not realize your kind was so particular about your foodstuffs. Ath grunted. I've seen them eat fruit. Crescia felt her stomach flip again, and Sam said, Fruits are good for you. Keep you nice and regular. 
She turned to the captain. The module spine does what you want, even if it does usually taste like melted plastics. Thing is, when we stopped at the asteroid the other day, I found a little farmer's market, rare out here. Aeth leant in, whispered into Kosher's exotic tempatic membrane, purveyors of exotic food and wares. That's right, Sam said, beaming at them, the post ape reflex that was supposed to radiate a non-threatening demeanor had merely made Kresher hungry. Anyway, Sam continued, at the market I found something I've not had for, oh, maybe two years. Cost me a bloody fortune, but, um, she girled the digits and paw around a complicated gesture that Kresher didn't recognize. The pressed her lips together. Absolutely worth it. Russia tasted the air again. It did smell good. What beast flesh is this, human? Sam, said Sam. You've never smelled this before. Sam turned back to the lightly smoking gruel as Crescia replied. I've smelled similar, but... Earth, whose olfactory senses were superior to hers, being the tracking lineage cut in. High levels of salt and animal bread merely for consumption. Very fatty, zero complex carbohydrates. A carnival's meal. Indeed. Sam made a slightly indignant noise in her throat. We're omnivores, remember? I eat just as much meat as you. She paused and then tilted her head to one side and to the neck. Maybe not as much as you guys, but you know what I mean. Aya suddenly looked worried, using the delicate body and visual language of the species. He had said it smells close to human flesh. Grasha couldn't contain her surprise. All four of her lids drew back, exposing her eyes in a harsh light the human had hung from the ceiling. As her pupils attempted to adjust to her carnivore vision in the mammal's daylight, she hissed, Surely not. Humanity appears to be the least likely to consume their own. Aeth flicked her tongue nervously, and Crescia turned back to Sam, who was once again on her haunches, prodding a sizzling slice of pink flesh. What creature is this, human? If I find that you are a cannibalistic, I will be forced to jettison you from the cargo bay immediately. Sam looked up to them, mouth a wide O in absolute horror. She sat there silently mouthing for a few seconds, face turning to her cooking and then back to them, disbelieving. Finally, she spoke. Do you think I'm a cannibal? You realize there are few worse taboos for us, right? Of course, hence my eagerness to freeze you in the blackness of space if you were. You humans are violent and bloodthirsty species at the best of times. We remember the war you fought against us and our empire. Sam stood now, barely up to the Lacertain's shoulder, but still the terrible vision of bright red far above her fleshy face and intense green eyes. Don't give me that crap. You started it. Thought that we'd be unusual mammalian pushovers you got in your world. She took a deep breath, calming herself. It did nothing to ease Crescia and Earth, however. He turned to the captain, hissed. Perhaps it is a creature genetically similar to her species. They waited until Sam smiled and dismalmingly. Look, I realize that had a potential to go badly wrong. Why don't we start over? I appreciate you giving me passage across the sector. I am not a cannibal. I am not dangerous. I wasn't even alive when the war ended. We don't live that long. Here. Sam stopped, spearing two pieces of now slightly browned meat over the skewer. Kresha tasted the air around it and listened to it crackled and hissed in the air. She looked at Eth, who saw them doing the same. It did smell good. Very good. You promise that this is not some butchered human? I would gladly eat such, but not accept it from another of its kind. Yes, Sam snapped. I promise. Eat it. Now. They took a piece of meat each, thick scaled claws unaffected by the still scalding temperature. Gresham hesitated before she ate, glancing once again at Earth. He was watching her mouth open, saliva pooling in his lower fangs, waiting to follow her lead. She took a deep breath and popped the meat into her mouth. Crescia let it sit there, doing nothing. She chewed a little, then a lot, and finally she swallowed. That was, um... Aya swallowed his morsel. Please, human, say there is more of that meat. It's Sam. Crescia cut in. Sam, she said with a sibilant hiss. Tell us there is more. Sam grinned again. That's better. Sure there's more. I brought about sixty rashes back. What beast is this? I've never tasted anything like this. Sam looked slightly perplexed, hairy ridges on her eyes crossing slightly. Really? Well, on Earth, we've got loads of them. Used to kill about 120 a year. Earth made a dismissive noise in his throat. That's not many at all. Million. 120 million. His dorsal spines raised in shock. 
That's a staggering amount for a mammalian species. Sam shrugged. Kresha pressed on, feeding the saliva duck, spilling with the smell coming from Sam's gruel. What animal is this? A pig. These rashes come from pigs? What are they named? What cut is this? Miss Sam shrugged again. Don't know, but they're called bacon. The rashes, I mean. Hey, you want some? Could teach you a good food module thing or two to reproduce. Won't be the same mind. Something to do with the pigs needing to be outside instead of, you know, never existing at all. And the flesh being made by messing about with molecules in that. She turned and rummaged through the small box and emitted a vapor of cold air inside, met with the warm air of the ship. Yeah. Sam held out two plastic wraps, each containing, according to the label, 20 rashes of purebred genetically modified reduced salt organic free-range bacon. The captain was amazed. You so such kindness. Why? Why grant us this gift and allow us to recreate it in our modules? The diplomacy of war, as deals and bargains made, could have been avoided if only the humans had shared such an amazing food before now. Well, Sam said, me mum, when I was a kid, would make us bacon sandwiches, Don asked as he opened his mouth to question, and especially when something bad had happened. Bacon, she said, eating a slightly burned rasher for obvious pleasure, soothes the soul. It surely is a meat of kings. Sam chewed thoughtfully. Actually, it's really bad for you. Real bad. Causes cancer. But bad for your heart. That sort of thing. But, uh, Aeth interrupted. But it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Sam raised a hand suddenly, palm out, making them flinch. That was supposed to be a high five, but yeah, bacon is worth it. Spread the message. Try not to get start a religion. She chuckled and turned back to the grill, humming. Have nothing tune. Kresha looked at Earth, who was giving her the same thoughtful expression. Up until now, they'd praised the Emperor, and only the Emperor. The Empire was grand, and all knew it. And yet... Bacon. End of story. Story number three. Game of Tag, written by a glass of whiskey. The humans are cheating. Don't care for the possibility they are. They even admit they have a strange feeling sometimes. I was a tenth round playing intergalactic simulated tag with these strange new creatures that it became apparent. A strange habit they're always suspecting when someone who was watching them had turned into an accusation of cheating. They had won every single round. In this game where each round takes many hours, none of them had lost it more than one. The simulation was meant to grant, as close as possible, a real physical attributes of the species that were. And the humans just um, ran and ran and ran, non-stop for the entirety of every match. They literally ran other species into the ground, for goodness sake. Now this was clearly grounds enough for cheating, but the simulations had gone over it and clearly explained precisely how they were able to do it. It was still insane and cheating, but fine. Every species has some advantage. Then came the next point. Their ability to detect when they were being watched. The humans never ran alone, always at least in five people, sneaking up on them, surprising them, intercepting them. Anything turned out to simply be impossible. If you moved, they would see you. Staying still while you were camouflaged did work. Sometimes, however, against something constantly running that fast, it was pure luck if you got one. That's not the worst part. Some of their sprinter species tried to intercept them. They were all lie still in the ambush and wait, but it was as if they could feel being watched. After some time, I inevitably tried to run after them. That was usually how they lost. Humans would just increase their speed, run up to a tree or hide themselves depending on the species that was after them. Once exhausted, they were easy pickings for the humans. So, in the last round, every other species decided to gang up on them, to see if they had any limits at all. We encircled them, hidden in perfect camouflage, captured. They would have passed right through one of our groups. That's when it happened. They stopped moving. One of them apparently felt something strange. So they stood there. Our perfect plan crumbled as they just stood there, waiting for something. For many hours, nothing moved. I can't even tell them how they did it, but they had detected us. All of us. 
Eventually, some got tired of waiting and attacked. The humans slipped out of the encirclement as if it had never been there in the first place. That round was it. They were cheating. Even the simulation couldn't explain how they knew that we were there. When we asked the humans, they simply said that something felt off. So they decided to wait. Something felt off. They didn't even see a single one of us, yet managed to perfectly counter our strategy. I'm not playing this stupid game anymore. I heard there's a new type of game called Shooters that apparently is much more fun. Gonna go play that instead of this so that I can get away from these cheating humans. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this dose of science fiction fun. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, please don't forget to support the author from the link down below. But if you want to support this channel, there are links as well down below for you to help with. But the easiest way would be to share this video. And if you are so inclined, subscribe as well. I will see you all in the next episode. And I hope that you all have a fantastic time until then. Cheers.